This is Law of Attraction Explored. I'm Tim Grimes. If you'd like a free guide that explains the hidden link between relaxation and the Law of Attraction, or if you want more information about my books or my coaching, you can visit RadicalCounselor.com. Enjoy the episode. So I thought we could circle back to Joseph Murphy, who we have not spoken about or quoted, I should say, in quite a while. At the beginning of this podcast, several episodes were exploring Murphy's work and particularly the power of your subconscious mind. One of the reasons I like Murphy so much is that he really talks about fear and facing fear and dealing with fear and various techniques to deal with fear better than just about anybody that I've seen in the Law of Attraction. And he's just such a a good holistic teacher of these principles. And he gives you so many options, which, as you know, we really are looking for, are different options and different ways of applying this advice and various approaches to make it easier in our life. Now, recently we've been discussing this waiting on God, wait for him, or a term that Murphy liked to use was the absolute method. And Murphy wrote a lot about this in different different places, and he described it in different ways. And today I thought I would read an excerpt from a short essay he wrote called Fear Not. Murphy's certainly best known for the power of your subconscious mind, but he was a prolific writer as well as teacher and speaker. He wrote a lot, and if you like the power of your, of your subconscious mind, I would encourage you to read some of his other books or essays because they're equally powerful and I think one reason that the power of your subconscious mind is so famous is that in many ways it's a conglomeration of some of these ideas and stories that he shares in other places all in one book. But a short essay like Fear Not is really uh, worth checking out. And you're going to see here a concise explanation of this waiting on the Father, being one with the Father, being one with the universe, being one with God. So Murphy wrote, Our daily prayer or daily mood must be one of joyous expectancy or a confident expectancy of all good things. This is our greatest prayer. If we expect the best, the best will come to us. It is our mood that is vital. The modern metaphysician of today teaches that God is pure feeling. If you feel full of confidence and trust, This is the movement of the Spirit of God within you, and it is all-powerful. None shall stay its hand and say unto it, What doest thou? Man's own consciousness is God. There is no other God. By consciousness is meant existence, life, and awareness. You, the reader, know that you exist. This knowing that you exist is God. What you are aware of is your concept of God. Each man must ask himself, What am I aware of? The answer to this question is his belief about God. It is what he knows about God. When he says, I am aware of want, I am fearful, I am sick, these are lies and have no truth in them. When man says, I am fearful, he is saying God is full of fear, which is nonsensical. When he says, I am in want, he is relating a lie and a denial of God's abundance and infinite supply. His faith is in failure, and he succeeds in being a failure. He believes in a lie, but he cannot prove the lie. The false condition seems real as long as he dwells upon it. When he ceases to believe it, he is free and healed. Really a great passage. And I I don't want to really go over this passage today from a deeply philosophical or spiritual sense, but more from a practical application. Metaphysics, the law of attraction, the way it's taught can be esoteric, but primarily the New Thought movement was meant to be practical and to help improve your life, to improve your health, to improve your relationships, to improve your financial situation. And this is, at least in large part, what Murphy is talking about here. Even though he is evoking this idea of God using that language, he's also just practically asking us, you know, what are we aware of? What am I aware of right now? And then relating that to the absolute. And the absolute is perfection. You can deny this if you like, but what is right now 
if not perfection. When we drop that rational thinking, drop that problem-solving mind and just be, how is that not perfection already right now? So when you ask, what am I aware of? Your answer indicates your belief about God. And when we become more aware of what's happening in this moment, we become more aware of God. Or another way of saying it is we become more real with ourselves. We acknowledge reality as it is. And reality as it is, is God. I am that I am. But again, I don't mean this in a overly spiritual way even. I just mean this is looking at what you are thinking right now and what you're believing right now. And if you are thinking of something that is true and deep and you feel that and believe that because it is true, your outward life is going to be better and more peaceful in all likelihood than if you believe something lesser than that. If you believe that you are living in lack, living in fear. And this sounds all nice on paper, but it's far more difficult to actually apply in our day-to-day lives than we might rationally expect. And that's why this is a continual practice. But when you tap into what you are, you no longer have that degree of fear or any fear when you really look at what you are. Because to say that God is fearful is irrational. It's ridiculous. It's nonsensical, as Murphy said. Likewise, when you say that you need something, I want something and need it, that's not looking at things the way that God or the universe looks at things or the way that God, the universe, is. But if you believe this lie, then you get that lie in your life. And it's what we all have a tendency to do is to believe the lie because of social conditioning, our culture, and perhaps many other influences and forces. It doesn't matter why we believe the lie. It's much more important to acknowledge that it is a lie and then to believe the truth, which is right now and which is always right now. And the more we can bring ourselves out of this rut, out of this false expectancy and false belief system in regards to what we are, in regards to what is, and more into what actually is happening right now, the more we will bear the fruit of God, bear the fruit of recognition of this truth. So this is just another angle or way to look at the absolute method or waiting on the Father. Again, I'm not using any of these terms concretely. They're, they're malleable. But Murphy is one of those great teachers at explaining how the recognition of God transforms your life in every way. And how can it not? It just makes sense when we look at it in this way. It involves not just an intellectual understanding, it involves a visceral experience. It involves feeling it beyond simple thinking and to get beyond thinking is to recognize what we are not and what we are not is limited and what we are is full and abundant and open and infinite and whatever other words you want to use what we are is good in the sense that what we are is God